Hey guys, good morning. Uh, as you can see behind me here, we got the 66 Mustang in. Uh, convertible, didn't end up being a 4-speed K-code car. It's an automatic uh, with a C4, but it is a 289. And uh, it's in surprisingly good condition. Um, I was expecting much worse, and uh, I'm pleasantly surprised with, uh, with the condition of the car. And I think it's not going to take a whole lot of work to get this thing back on the road. Um, so that's what I'm going to start doing today. I'm going to get the car up on jack stands and uh, get underneath of it and start doing some inspections, uh, draining some fluids out and see where we're at and what kind of condition the car was left in when it was parked. Um, I've got to inspect the bores and make sure there's no rust in there uh, before I can turn the motor over by hand. Um, once I can confirm that the motor is free and it does turn over, uh, then we can kind of go from there. But uh, it's possible that the oil pan is is completely caked solid. Um, if I can actually get liquid oil coming out of there and it isn't as bad as I uh, uh, suspect it may be, then uh, we might just be able to flush it a little bit and uh, get all the gunk and, and residue out of there, pull the valve covers of course, uh, clean out the, the tops of the heads, um, and take a look at what, uh, what things look like inside. But before I crack anything open on the car, uh, I've got to get it up in the air so I can do a visual inspection underneath. Things I'm going to be looking for, of course, is any rust, which I haven't seen any rust externally on the body, so that's awesome. Um, I don't expect to find any under there. Um, I'm going to be looking for condition of all the, uh, all the joints on the drive shaft, the universal joints, uh, pinion seal on the rear axle, uh, output shaft seal on the, rear, on the back of the transmission. Um, main rear main seal on the motor uh, those are the main seals that I think are gonna have to probably be replaced so one way or another either I'm pulling the motor out with the transmission and changing those seals out or I'm gonna yank the transmission under the car leave the motor in the motor mounts um, it's gonna be one or the other I think uh, the rear end can stay in there I can pull the third member out if if necessary and change out all the seals that need to be changed but I don't know yet uh, what, which way I'm going to go with this. So first step today is is get it up on. So this is our 66 Mustang convertible that we're going to be working on. Uh, car's in excellent condition. It's been sitting for about 30 years off and on. I, I don't know how much it's been started and ran in that time period. I do know that the tags on the, the last time it was registered and the tags on the plate are 89, which is almost 30 years ago. Obviously the top has seen better days and we will have to replace the top. Uh, the interior though is very clean. It's not bad for a driver. We've got a few things that need to be replaced, maybe some repainting of uh, all the gauge bezels and the glove box door and center console and such. but. Uh, as far as seats, the seats are in nice shape. Door panels uh, can be freshened up to look good. The car has been uh, well maintained and well cared for its life. Um, I don't see, you know, any any signs of abuse or, or neglect. Everything's been uh, been replaced that's needed to be replaced over its life, and uh, looks in great shape. Unfortunately, uh, as expected, the uh, the gas tank smells like uh, lacquer thinner. So all of that fuel's got to got to be drained and the tank cleaned properly. All the fuel lines will have to be flushed. Uh, um, all the hard lines blown out. Rubber lines will have to probably be replaced. Yeah, so I'm super excited about this project. Uh, I've got got some work ahead of me but it's a lot less extensive I think than what I was dreading um, I was dreading a full-blown uh, partial restoration on the car I knew we weren't going to build a show car necessarily but um, but it definitely was it is in a lot better shape than I was expecting so I'm going to inspect the car uh, get a list of items that need to be covered uh, with the owner and we're going to discuss budget and see uh, how much work we want to put into the car now 
um, and, uh, and come up with a game plan as to what we're going to replace, what we're not going to replace. And so I'm going to quit talking here and get to work, get this thing up in the air. Okay guys, so I've completed my initial overview of the car. Uh, I put the, uh, put the Mustang up on stands uh, as high as I could get it and be comfortable underneath there and climbed all over the car, exterior, interior, underneath, engine compartment, trunk, um, with my flashlight and inspected everything. Um, and what I did is I took my, my phone, set it on a voice recorder, stuck it in my pocket, and as I went around inspecting and looking at things, uh, I would just make notes. And after about a 45 minute review of the car, I've got a pretty good list of items. Um, basically anything that's rubber on the car uh, underneath has to be replaced. Sway bar bushings, uh, uh, shackle bushings, spring bushings. Um, uh, Basically everything that was rubber underneath there is um, anything that's a, a safety concern um, is getting replaced, no question. So uh, I, I went around and inspected everything. Most of the seals are leaking, um, rear end seals like the pinion seal, uh, third member is leaking. Uh, the output shaft seal on the back of the transmission is leaking. So, you know, those things are just regular maintenance items, but when you um, have a car that is 50 years old that has sat for 30 of those years um, you know all of these things have just uh, have just worn out and even if a seal was slightly wet and questionable um, as soon as that car hits the road and starts driving that seals gonna start leaking so um, those are getting replaced uh, including the rear main seal you know when you're when you're looking a car over like this um, there's just there's just things that must be done. If I'm going to put a family member in this car and let her drive it and tell her that it's good, um, I can't have it breaking down on her a week from now, a month from now, or you know, 500 miles from now. It needs to be good when it leaves here and be driving and be safe. So when you guys are you know inspecting cars like this, uh, especially if it's a, a job you're doing for someone else, you have to be a little more extra careful and take. Uh, you know, uh, take a little bit more precaution than you might do on your own car. You know, if it was my own car, I might, I might skip a couple of these must-do items and deal with them down the road if they become a problem. But uh, that's really not the best way to do it. So you have to kind of work that into your estimation as to what it's going to cost you to put the car back on the road. Um, you have to plan for stuff like that, especially if it hasn't been driving and running. Cars that are running and driving, the fluids are circulating, um, and and they're typically not sitting and dry rotting. Uh, and that's kind of the, what we see here is there was a lot of uh, items that I found that were broken before or worn out before and not addressed uh, at the time. So those are those aren't anything new, but the 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 rotting parts, all the rubber stuff that's rotted and cracked and uh, has fallen off the car, those are things that are just a, a sign of years of uh, sitting. So I'm going to give her a call and, and uh, not be all doom and gloom and, and uh, give her, send her the list so she can review it uh, and see if she agrees to the items that I've noted so that we can try and get this rolling as soon as possible so I can start ordering parts and getting parts in so I can start making progress because I can't make any progress without parts. Okay guys, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for me today on the Mustang inspection here. Um, I've taken all my notes down. I've created a spreadsheet with some ballpark prices on all of the must-do items and some of the maybe items that I think I'd like to do um, to upgrade the car a little bit, make it a little bit nicer uh, for the owner. So I still think we've got a great car here. It's uh, you know it needs a lot of maintenance replacements and maintenance work, uh, but it's a great car. It's going to take a little bit of money to get it back on the road again. Uh, but the value of these cars is so high now, especially a convertible. I'm not an authority on, on Mustangs and an authority on uh, current prices in this market, but uh, I, I know that they're highly sought after, especially convertibles in this year range. And uh, I, I, I think it's a very valuable car and it's worth putting the money and time into.
So that's it for me today, guys. Um, I hope this helps some of you guys that might be considering buying an old classic like this and putting it back on the road. Or maybe you have one and you need to get an idea of what it's going to take to uh, to get it back running and driving and um, make it a good solid driver again. So hopefully this kind of helps you out and some, gives you some key items to look at and some things not even to look at that are just going to be replaced right off the bat. So that's it guys, thanks for watching. If you think I did a good job, you liked the video, please click like and subscribe. Um, and if you have any comments about the 66 Mustang or you have one yourself that you're restoring, something like this, uh, leave them below.